Hey, this is Veronica. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Semaphore 40 Redshift hair nodes to render some splines that are representing something that is not hair. So in this animation, I have this pink astrocyte sitting in this uh, field of neuropil, which is like all the axons and dendrites from nerve cells that fills up a lot of the mass of the brain. And Along those axons and dendrites, we see these yellow lights representing nerve impulses running in the background. And the way that I created the neuropill was by using um, a regular material with some hair nodes. So I've taken just the splines representing the axons from that scene, and you can see them here. And I've put that axon material there as well. So this is just um, a bunch of splines that I generated using a tracer object and a cloner. It's all in one object over here. The key thing to make these visible is making sure that you have a redshift object tag on them and that the curve is set to hair strand. So if I hit play, on my render view and if I take this tag off they disappear if I put this tag back on they come back and then my material is uh, axon is doing the rest of the work and we can take a sneak peek inside that material here we go um, and you can see it's a um, relatively complicated setup but it's using some basic principles that I'll go through now and as a result uh, when I go through the timeline, you can see that these pulses move along these axons. And you don't get the same pulse on every uh, spline segment here. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material, a new stripped down material, just so you can see how it goes. Now, I'm not using a hair material or anything special. It's just a, a standard material. I'm going to call it basic hair, and I will throw that on my spline object. Um, and now you can see it's nothing special. We've lost all those pulses and things. So the first node that I am going to add to my new material is a hair position node. And I'm going to take this out scalar and I'm actually going to put that into a scalar ramp. Now, if we just actually look at the out scalar and put it straight out in the material, um, you can see already um, that it is mapping based on the position. So one end to the other, it goes from black to green, depending on it, whether it's the end or the start of the spline. I'm going to take that, put that into this ramp as the alt input, and then take that out and we'll throw it into diffuse for now. Look at it in solo. And that takes it and makes it black and white. Now within the scalar ramp settings, what we get is this curve. And now I can um, go under the details and load a preset and make it say um, a Gauss, a Gaussian curve. And now you can see we go from black to white to black again along the length. Now, if I take this and I squeeze it, make it smaller, now I have a smaller little segment of white, more like that nerve impulse that I have animated. So I'm going to just make it really small so we get that nice focused little light. Um, now this is the reason why I'm using the scalar ramp is that this is easier to animate than your typical ramp. Um, I find it's just easier to animate the curve um, than to use the, the color stops in, in the uh, standard ramp. Okay, so now we have these nerve impulses. Now, I'm not going to animate them, but you can see if I move this curve here, uh, make sure these guys whoop, stay along the bottom. Um, but you can see as I move it, it moves the position of these pulses. So you, 
if you animate this curve, therefore you can get a little pulse that moves along your axon or along your spline. Now I want to use some random um, masking to restrict this pulse to just some of the splines. So I'm going to look up hair. Now hair random color, that's the next one I'm going to put in. And let me put that there, hit solo. As you can see, um, it comes just red at first, and it's because the random color is set to be very subtle at first, and we want it to be really obvious. So we're going to turn the base color to white, and I'm going to turn the value variation up to one. Uh, now it should update. And we're having a little hiccup. Of course we are, because I'm recording. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now um, you can see it. this isn't positional, so if I rotate around you should get a sense that some of these hairs are black, some are white, and some are a shade of gray in between, but it is applied evenly to the entire hair. Now I'm going to take, uh, again, a ramp. Um, this time just just a regular ramp, not a scalar ramp. Um, and I'm going to put the hair random color as the input, and let's just throw this out to diffuse for now. And now with the ramp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these color knobs, color stops, and I'm going to set them to step. So now what's going to happen is that my hairs are either black or white depending on where these color stops are sitting. And I can add another black one. Okay, and that helps me narrow my selection of hairs here. Okay, so now I have just some of the hairs selected, so to speak, some of them are white. And now I'm gonna bring together um, this pulse information and this random using a color layer. So I go to layer, my nose, add a color layer node. Okay. So if I look at just this color layer, the base color is black. Now I'm going to um, pipe in to layer one color my pulses. Okay, so now they're applying to all the strands, and then I'm going to apply to the layer one mask my um, random, randomly selected hairs. And now you can see that I've restricted the pulses to just some of the hairs here. And that's the basic principle. Um, obviously with the other material, I, you know, did a lot of other things to make it look nice, but this is the basic technique of how you use the hair position and the hair random color with splines. And again, using the redshift object tag um, where the curve is set to hair strands.